but we'll speak to the power. We're going to look at what um, uh, San, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Fem Fangano, said about the, um, the the currency and the state of our nation. And he answered, a, on a, 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 he gave his views on a range of issues issues con, concerning um, the, uh, the nation. And let's have a listen. Um, principle of it was um, he focused on areas of um, the currency and, uh, um, and, and, and you know, so many areas. But let's let's have a listen. Here we go. Uh, this was covered on channels, of course, by which it was with Shimo Okibaloi. Uh, Okibaloi. Here we go. Team human rights lawyer and activist, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano. We'll be discussing the recent developments that have captured the nation's attention, including the INEX response to concerns surrounding the uh, 2023 election, as well as President Tunubu's first month in office. Mr. Falano, thank you so much indeed for joining us uh, tonight on the program. Mm. Let me get your, uh, your, your view generally. Uh, I mean, oh. for the Tunubu team, it's a big deal. One month in office, and uh, I mean, from their own point of view, they've made some decisive dec uh, policy uh, decisions, and they've made some far-reaching um, policy actions, which is already having its effect on the livelihoods and the lives of many Nigerians. But in, in summary, how do you uh, react or how do you describe the one month in office of Bola Tunobu? Well, I think uh, the last one month has been moments of uh, challenges, uh, whereas the Buhari administration had uh, cancelled uh, the first, first subsidy, subsidy. Uh, mm -hmm. in the 2023 budget. Yeah, exactly, exactly, uh, exactly. But Nigerians expected that that regime was not going to carry out uh, the implementation of mm -hmm. the remover. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Bola Tinubu administration uh, took Nigerian by surprise uh, when at the inauguration speech of the president, uh, uh, an announcement was made to the fact that uh, uh, fuel subsidy was gone forever. Mm -hmm. uh, the reverberating effects of the policy have been fed by the Nigerian people, particularly uh, the wretched of the earth, the poor, the low poloi, you know, and therefore the government has been compelled to declare its intention to roll out some palliatives uh, on the part of the labor, labor movement and the civil society organizations. Uh, they are asking the government, the government is being asked to consider alternatives, alternative economic program, as opposed to uh, the Washington consensus or the policies uh, dictated, deleterious policies dictated by the IMF and World Bank. And that is that, whereas you have announced the removal of first subsidy, and we are being told now that about $10 billion will be saved. Nigerians are asking the government to look at the alternatives. Can we trade with countries that are prepared to accept Naira as opposed to our looking for the dollars? Can we embrace now the compressed oh. natural gas, a CNG, instead of PMS? Because from what we have just been told by one of uh, uh, leading economists, bourgeois economists in the country, uh, uh, Mr. Rewane, we are being told now that uh, this is not the end of first subsidy removal. According to him, the government has not totally removed first subsidy. Uh, the EPA, uh, I think another organization, petroleum suppliers, are saying that very soon, because of the a collapse, I mean, or because of devaluation of the national currency via dollarization, the pump price may go to 700 naira. So the government will have to go back to the drawing table and look at the available options 
and at the Kenya model by looking for friends in the international arena, like Saudi Arabia. Can we pay Naira while we are trying to fix our refineries while you give us fuel? Or you simply trade with countries like China and India. Please, we are ready to sell our oil to you. Can you pay us Naira instead of dollars so that we can show up the value of the Naira? Because as long as you continue to devalue the Naira via dollarization, the country will be in trouble. And these are the issues. Mm. These so, are the issues. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, for a lot of Nigerians, some of them who tonight are watching uh, the, the, the program tonight, uh, having bought an expensive, they bought fuel three times the price uh, they would normally buy it May 28th. Uh, May 29th, indeed, lives, indeed. The, fuel, the, the poor prices is, is a crazy Some thing, but let's go ahead. That, uh, before now, that they will go to work. Um, albeit with the little uh, salaries they are earning. But now some of them will have to trek some distance, uh, then have to take transport because if they have to spend what they need to spend on transport, the, the, the prices have gone up. The price of commodities have gone up. The price of transportation have gone up. I mean, you look at it, uh, subsidy remover, a lot of people have applauded it. But the effect of it is more on the, the downtrodden, the poor, the masses of our nation. Could, should the, I mean, or couldn't the, um, the Tinubu government have seen this happening? And now the issue of electricity tariff, and although they said this may not happen, they hike in the price of electricity tariff, and a whole lot of these issues are already impacting directly on the food on the table and the quality of life of the average citizen. They say, well, it might be a good policy, mm -hmm. but Nigerians are suffering. Yeah, well, indeed, we're suffering. Important. This is why we are asking uh, for President Tinubu to really look into um, getting the... the look at the impact. Uh, we are calling on the government again to really look at uh, Operation Fix the Four Refineries. Uh, I've said that. I'm going to go and do a bad live broadcast with that again. I did that before. I'm going to do Operation Fix the, Fix the Refineries too. I've done one. I'm going to do two and I'll be bringing that as a regular discussion as well. Um, but, you know, let's listen to uh, Femi Falano, uh, San. Uh, listen, let's go ahead. Impact on the people. Now that it's clear that uh, those who initially applauded the removal of first subsidy are beginning to appreciate the enormity of the crisis that it has caused for the country. And now, mounting prayer on the government to fast track uh, the process of cushioning the effects of removal. Uh, no doubt there was a lot of fraud that characterized the management of first subsidy, and the government will have to investigate that. Indeed. Secondly, the government will have to move speedily to address the suffering of the people, undeserved suffering. pains undeserved. inflicted on the people yeah. because of the irresponsibility of the Nigerian ruling class. Whereas General Muhammad Buhari had promised in 2014-2015, when I get to power, I am going to fix all the refineries. I'm Listen, we'll come back again. The refinery, which is never fixed, obvious, obviously, got some issues with the with the network. So um, he's got issues with the network there. But that's what I talked about. Uh, let me just show you, and I'll bring you um, one of the things that I've talked about on this platform that I might, that I think it's worth us looking into again. Uh, I talked about the need for us to have uh, uh, get the refineries fixed. Um, I, 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 I know you've heard. Uh, Buhari promised to do that in 2015. We'll get all the refineries working and everything else. You know, all of that stuff that is said to us. And of course, we all now know it turns out to be a lie. So. Um, yeah, now, operation fix the refineries, 
So I'm going to show you what I've come up with and, and some of the discussions I've been having around that. So let me just blow that off for you all to see. Uh, you know, we, we uh, I bring this in here because I want you to have that, you know. It says, Operation Fictin and Finalities must be our collective responsibility as sovereigns. For the first time in 24 years, demo uh, in first of 24 years of democracy, it is time to exercise our sovereignty as stated under Section 14.2a of the Nigerian Constitution. So this is an I, I did that a few days ago, and I maintain that. And you can hear that that is being backed by the the discussion um, being put forward um, strongly by San Femi Falano. Uh, let's proceed and see if it's come back. One second, please. Seems to be some uh, glitch there. Uh, connection uh, Let's forward issues. It. Added to a, a just, kind of I want you. I, I want you to go to where he he will come back. So let's just uh, one second. Before going, let's just go this way. I'm gonna quickly just do something quickly. We don't want to do anything else. One second. So we're just gonna go here. So let's go here. So here we go. <sighs> Let me say that 10.74 million dollars of the 23.3 million will be spent on goods, works, uh, non-consulting services, consulting services, operating costs of the National Social Safety Night, coordinating office and other projects. Out of that, Mr. Falano, uh, the federal government is expected to spend 23.3 uh, million dollars on consultancy fees. Hmm. Out of the eight hundred million dollars to be gotten, fees. what is your view on this palliative? If Nigerians are getting palliatives, what are the kind of palliatives that will have a direct effect on their lives now? Because they are experiencing the pain now. Don't forget, of course, I keep saying we need to fix the families first thing first. That's the first thing they must do. The so-called loan uh, should be a grant. Yeah. Under the there you go. Listen. Responsibility Act, you cannot take a loan for palliatives. Uh, See. Sections 43 and 44 there you of go. the Fiscal Responsibility Act are very clear that loans are meant for capital projects. There you go. So you can't take loans for a palliative. Secondly, the National Assembly can't take so loans for palliatives. Give an approval. Sorry. To request for a loan. Ap apologies. Yeah. I, I like us to clear that yeah. so that we don't forget. Yeah. So these loans that the World Bank has approved for Nigeria, if it's used for a for palliative, is it a crime? No, it's not a loan, but a grant. A loan cannot be used for palliatives under the Fiscal Mr. Responsibility Act. Act. But that Therefore, is what is being called, Mr. Falano. The World Bank should be persuaded to appreciate. That is what the World Bank calls No, it doesn't matter that is what, what the federal government it. calls it. We are not, we are not taking a loan. Exactly. The, the World Bank knows the provisions of the law. The, the federal government of Nigeria knows the law and that you cannot take loan alone for palliatives. So for that, to that extent, it was the cent World Bank that came up with the idea of giving the money. The government never applied for a loan. The World Bank said, you know, let's encourage you to remove first subsidy. Therefore, we are giving you a grant of $800 million. Some people are calling it a loan. It is not a loan. You don't give a loan without a request, without an approval by the National Assembly. So, Second, Mr. Falano, just please, give apologies, a, a loan apologies, please. Let's clear that. Not, Let's clear yeah. that, please, sir. Hmm. Uh, and Can you see what's going on? For a loan, Can you all see? a repayment plan. So this is the repayment plan as we know it. It shouldn't be a repayment plan. It shouldn't be a loan. It should be a grant. On the 15th of January, 2027. And the last payment is due on the 15th of July, 2051. A grant does not have a repayment plan. If I'm correct, I start to be corrected. A loan does have a repayment plan. Uh, uh, listen, we... let's listen. You see, this is a very important shall point we... that's yes, been made here. Have... This is a very important point being made by uh, 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 San uh, Femi Falano here. Uh, the government should, under no circumstances, take a, um, a loan for palliative. Uh, it should only be, it should be, uh, and the UN knows that they, they can only give grants. But look at how, the question now is, is the government already lying to us when they say it's a loan? 
when they actually know it's a, it's a palliative or is this just a trickery? What is it? Which is it? So let's listen to how um, uh, uh, Femi Falan Osan interprets this. Uh, my love friend has written to the World Bank to appreciate that you are not giving a loan. And if you insist it's a loan, we are going to challenge it. What they have given is a grant, and we are not going to pay back. You want to, the government, you want to correct the government to remove a subsidy for reasons best known to you. So coming back to what should happen, um, you know, I, I think the government is saying now that we are saving $10 billion from the removal of FERC subsidy. And that is what the government will have to address. How much of that fund will be deployed with their mark for addressing the challenges faced by Nigerians? And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, reluctant to say this. For the past 42 years or thereabout, that the government has been increasing, Nigerian governments have been increasing uh, the cost of petroleum products. Yes. It was only the Abasha Junta that set up the uh, Petroleum Trust Fund. Credit to them for that. Uh, Even though we know he legally hijacked the their government, uh, go our government. The the Since then, all the gains have been lost in the system through diversion of the fund. So if the government wants to save the bulk of the $10 billion that, you know, was meant for first subsidy and deploy that to address the problems of the people, there has to be an agency to go out there, you know, people by credible people, to go out there and address the problems confronting our people. And by the way, like the section, we're not dealing with only civil servants or workers. The government of Kwara State and Edo State have already reduced the number of working days from five to three. And I do hope other governments are going to follow suit. Uh, 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 follow suit or devise other means mm -hmm. to address the problems confronting our people. Since all the state governments are clapping for the removal of first subsidy, subsidy. the attention should not be on the federal government alone. No, the I agree. Must intervene decisively. The local government must also bring out the amplitude to address the pains exactly that inflicted on the Nigerian people. Indeed, Mr. Mr. Falano, when we when a lot of Nigerians hear palliative, it doesn't look like a good idea. You remember, you have, I mean, on one of this uh, one of our platform, you were you were popular for for saying that they were holding Indomie. Palliatives in this country has not come with a, a, as a good idea. You know what happened with palliatives. You know what happened with sharing handouts, 5,000 naira. It hasn't really worked. A lot of economists have said that has not really impacted on the real economy of Nigeria. And these are the questions that we are asking. So, uh, and if people, uh, uh, Mr. Falano, no, have said... Show what I expect. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I can hear you. Please go ahead. This time around, we're not talking of 5,000 naira per month. We're, because we're talking of 133 million people that are extremely poor. And 133 million people, extremely poor. About 4 million have been added to that. 133 million people, poor. 4 million has been added from the... Number. So we're talking of about... 137 million people. That's 137 so million. Poor. The 800 million dollars being proposed by this World Bank will go nowhere. And that is why the government will have to take the bulk of the 10 billion dollars being saved to address problems, the challenge of the removal of funds. Secondly, we must also look at statutory palliatives, welfare programs. Welfare already program. decreed by law for implementation by the government. For instance, you are supposed to have national health insurance scheme for Nigerians. Is that working? You have 
Pension Reforms Act. Why are people still queuing up to collect pension? Why? You have Why are people queuing up? Good question. Very good uh, question. Child's Right Act. Child's Right Law in each of the states. These laws <coughs> have insisted that every Nigerian child shall be educated from primary to junior secondary school. For me, you have the Housing Act, National Housing Act, that prescribes that two and a half percent of the salary of a worker will be deducted and put in a fund so that workers can apply for housing, housing loan. Exactly. These are statutory palliatives that have to be implemented Nigeria is not working. These are statutory palliatives that are simply not being applied by the government. And that, you know, Tinubu must, uh, President Tinubu must address these concerns. And the way that all of this is looking, it's looking like many of the things that should be in place under statutory law are not being applied. That means that, again, we don't have the power. The, 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 the government is not willing to apply what is actually it is mandated to do. And they promise to serve the people. And by refusing to do that, they're not honoring that promise. And that is why I always say what I say here. Um, let me show you. Many of you who have been on this platform, you will know. Uh, fixing the refinery, yes, of course. But, but that's not the one I'm trying to show you. Let me show you the one I'm looking for. And I want you to, of course, I'm sure you'll agree with me on this as well. Um, um, let me show you what I'm trying to, you know, always uh, reiterate which is this section here, uh, as well as the fixing of the refinery, uh, we need the government to be able to, we the people must participate in our governance. Sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from whom the government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. We are the sovereigns. We need to impress upon the government that we are not satisfied with the government and we need them to make a change. How do we go about those things and monitor what they're doing? It is through participation, not only participation, active participation. The constitution states, the participation of the people in the government shall be in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. The constitution gives us the power as sovereign to hold our governors to account. We need to be actively doing that in every local government area right now. So let's, let's proceed. I'll just bring that in to remind us to always be, we have to take collective action together. It is no longer bystander. We have to be active participants in our own governance on a daily basis. Let's let's proceed. I to do that, the government will have to wake up and appreciate its responsibilities. Mm. I mean, I'd like to quickly move to other issues because this issue of subsidy is go. not the Please only matter. Please remember, you have the power. It, we to must hold them to account using these powers. Please. At, at, at the moment. But there's something that bothers my mind, Mr. Falano, and it's one of the issues that you raised earlier. Uh, and th those who are critically looking at uh, um, these uh, $800 million, the amount that is going to con some consultants and the amount that is going into some hands that, that Nigerians need to really dig and probe exactly and how to utilize because Consultants. this is going to be a burden to the nation is not supposed to go into two, private and two million go to the hands of consultants Falano, if we say and government has come out to say that they know that there are highly placed people who are involved in stealing Listen. Nigerian, Nigeria's crude oil Listen. why is it difficult to bring these people to book are they too powerful are they too big for the over 2 million or 200 million Nigerians, or what exactly is going on? Good question. Let's see what. Oh. About that. Sorry about that. One second. Give me a minute, please. Uh, one second, please. I'm just going to quickly just deal with that. I didn't want that to be there. So we we'll go forward. I don't know what happened there, but we will bring it back again. So anyway, it's back here. So I didn't want any noise or anything like that to happen. So let's, before we go ahead. Okay, good. Here we go. So. Well, uh, so uh, our OPEL, OPEL quota is 1.8 million barrels of crude oil per day. We are barely producing 1.2 1. 1. 2 
Millions. So we are 600,000 barrels out. Are stolen, daily. stolen daily. And this is not acceptable. No responsible government can say that oil theft cannot be combated. Uh, I, I, I'm aware. I'm aware that very soon the oil thieves are going to be exposed. Whereas there are 36 oil terminals. Listen. Only 20 of them are metered. <laughs> 36 oil terminals. In Only 20 of them are metered. After the protest, the Jonathan administration set up the new Rivadu Committee to investigate the monumental fraud that informed importation of fuel. At the end of the investigation, that panel came up with a report that many of our terminals are not metered. I am aware that we have 36 terminals. terminals. Only 20, 20 are of them are metered. So, so 16. The many 16. Wow. Wow. Have not been metered. Wow. And that is where oil is stolen. So this regime has a task. More so that Mr. Nuri Badu is now the national security advisor. He must walk his talk by ensuring yeah. that the recommendation submitted to the Jonathan administration is implemented now. Yes. Because Sheung Nigeria is the only oil producing country. Oh my goodness. Man. The only oil producing country. Talking of oil theft. Talking of smuggling of petroleum products. Talking of Please do this. Do this. I'm asking you, please. And so this must end. hold them to account. Yes. And for me, that is the main issue to address. If you are giving a ten five thousand naira to poor people, ten thousand naira, and you are devaluing the currency through dollarization, you are not going to address the problems. In fact. You are going to maximize poverty, the poverty and increase inequality in the country. Indeed. So the government will have to address and put an end to oil theft. It's not oil science to do that. I mean, rocket science. With the appointment, with the employment of uh, a non-state state actor like Mr. Uh, government on Polo, which is to the shame. Shame. Auto shame. Auto shame. Or to shame. Through that organization, we are now able to produce 1.2 million barrels of crude oil per day instead of 900,000 barrels. And now that the government is being called upon to meet all our terminals, I am very confident, right, that the government can stop oil theft in a matter of weeks. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Will they? That will happen. Will Mr. they? Falano, let me take you away to another uh, very crucial matter, which is the issue of election. I had on the program yesterday, Mr. Festus Okoye, uh, who works with INEC, and he was talking about the glitch that happened in the transmission of results via the IREF portal, which caused a lot of stir and a lot of... Okoye, Okoye, as we all know, is just a mouthpiece. He's a mouthpiece. Um, it's only a mouthpiece. He doesn't have. He's only a spokesperson. The person that needs to answer questions, of course, we all know, is Mahmoud Jakub. That's the man. But that's another story. But let's listen to what he's saying here. Nigerians are asking the question: What really happened? There are three elections on that day. Two were successfully transmitted via the IREF. The other, uh, other presidential election, several weeks after, were not properly transmitted to the IREF portal. Let me get your view on our electoral mm. process. Consistent election is one of the building blocks uh, of a democracy. What Joe, do you think is going on? I am very, very reluctant to speak about the report of the EU. Rightly so. EU yeah, because there's a colonial, colonial mentality. They have no business talking to us about that. of colonial mentality. Exactly. For us, in this stage and Indeed. time, yes. to be celebrating the reports of uh, European Union observer. I mean, uh, I have found reports in the local media much more credible than the report of the EU. And so we shouldn't waste our time debating what the European observers fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, they are saying about 97 people were killed. 
The local media have reported there were 137 people, and that has been confirmed so, by the human rights community. And I can point out other areas that one cannot rely upon. But what is important is that INEC is already put to task before the presidential election tribunal mm -hmm. to justify what happened with respect to the transmission of election results. Uh, 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 and I'm not in a position no, uh, uh, we wouldn't expect to him make to a categorical statement because of ethical consideration. As a senior lawyer, I cannot use your medium to make definitive pronouncement on matters that are pending before court. a properly constituted court of law. Yes. So I would rather keep my own Counsel. opinion for now until the court uh, has been able to determine the veracity of the claim of INET. Thank you. Let me, let me get your view on the uh, wreck in Adamawa, Sokoto, and Abia State. Uh, INEC itself had come out to say there are investigation, especially on the, the Adamawa wreck. And they have uh, enough, uh, there's a report on the investigation from the police, and perhaps they have enough to be able to prosecute that matter. What, how much of in, an impact, Mr. Falano? Uh, is that scenario? Uh... Uh, let me just interject there. One of the problems that we have, and I've said it over and over again, is the unwillingness of those who are in governance to actually apply the law that they so much like to tell us that we have. Their unwillingness to apply the law means that they leave loopholes, open gaps, in which criminality, corruption, fraud, you name it, falls through those gaps because of their unwillingness to follow, to adhere to the rule of law. And that is a fundamental issue with what you call Nigeria. And that is why that constitution, we the people, again, I'm going to say it, our voices must be heard. We need to begin to do this. All of us. Section 14, 2 a. Sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from whom the government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. Authority. Collectively, we are sovereigns in all 778 local government area. Each local government area is a sovereignty. We working together, we coming together in those communities and working together as a sovereign. We'll, we have the power to what? Go to 14.2a, uh, 14.2c, which is the participation by the people in their government shall be in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. And of course, the central con con uh, 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 um, um, the provision, the central provision of course is that we collectively in each of the local government areas, we are sovereigns and we must exercise that power. That is the only way we will get our government from state, uh, from local to state to federal, to comply with rule of law, with our active monitoring of what they're doing. We have to become active participants in our governance, and I maintain that. Uh, let's carry on. On, the, uh, on our election, on our democracy. Well, under the Electoral Act 2022, I think Section 145, INEC is empowered to prosecute electoral offenders, uh, whether they are uh, INEC uh, chiefs or resident electoral commissioners or whatever. So once the police has concluded the investigation, the report will be turned to INEC for prosecution of those who are indicted. And I'm aware that the INEC has set up a, a prosecution team, mm. including lawyers drawn from the uh, EFCC, ICPC, and others, uh, uh, to prosecute electoral offenders. The Nigerian Bar Association has submitted nets of lawyers in all the 36 states of the federal and the federal capital territory to assist in the prosecution of electoral offenders. So I expect that the reports of the indicted resident electoral commissioners will be submitted to the committee so that they can be, they, 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 those who are indicted will be arraigned as soon as possible. 
Because unless we have sanctions for impunity, we're not going to stop uh, the manipulation of elections in our country. Man, hmm. Mr. Mr. Falano, uh, INEC itself has said they will go through, they, in fact, they will begin an internal procedure. It will begin in J July and it will end sometimes in the end of August. An internal procedure, an administrative process of looking at what went wrong and what went right. And when we look at it, the kind of money, out of the no money situation that Nigeria is in, that the nation invested in an election. Do we deserve better as a people? The kind of election that INEC delivered to this nation in February and March of this year. What INEC itself has admitted publicly that, uh, and the way it put it is that they were technological and uh, Severe challenges. INEC, with profound respect, conducted elections in 2023 that would have been the best in recent time, but for the failure of the system to transmit the result of the presidential election. Uh, diverse machines were distributed, it captured voters. People voted, even though there was violence promoted by political leaders in many parts of the country. And there were threats. Uh, some voters were prevented from casting their vote. That cannot be blamed on INEC, but on the security forces. But all those who committed those electoral offenses are required, are expected to be prosecuted. Uh, we spent about 300 billion naira. 300 billion naira? We had 300 price. billion naira. I have suggested, and this is what has just taken place in Sierra Leone, that our four elections, presidential governorship, national assembly, and state of assembly elections, can uh, uh, be held in one, one day. day. Sierra Leone has just done that. And Nigeria can do it so that we can save a lot of coins. But again, unless you go back to the drawing table this time around, where did we go wrong? Or where did I go wrong? Can we now have full electronic voting, full deployment of technology, so that once the uh, machine is fully deployed, reverse machine, as accreditation, election has taken place and the results are transmitted to the uh, uh, central server of INEC. All you will need to do when you want to prove your election petition is simply to get the report of the uh, collated from the BVAX machine and the report of transmitted result, and you put the tribunal. It should be possible for you to prove your petition in two weeks, in 14 days, like it is done in Kenya. But once you are required to call 150 witnesses, you are going to be in trouble. And that is why we must, at the end of the uh, ongoing judicial proceedings, we must go back to the drawing table. Don't wait till 2026. We must start now to reform the electoral process so that we won't go back to this kind of shameful experience once again. Let me, let me take you to yet another uh, issue, and it is the investigation, suspension, and arrest of uh, Mr. Godwin Emefiele and Mr. Abirashid Bawa. Godwin Emefiele, the governor of the CBN, Abirashid Bawa, the suspended um, ESCC chairman. Now, it's been two weeks that uh, Abirashi Bawa has been um, uh, with the DSS, which they confirm. Mr. Emefiele is over two weeks. Legally speaking, are, are these the right procedures? Well, under the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 
uh, if you are going to detain a Nigerian beyond 24 hours in a place like Lagos or Abuja and in other places where you do not have courts within a radius of 40 kilometers, you are required to approach a magistrate court to ask for a remand order to allow for investigation. Uh, uh, to that extent, uh, the State Security Service uh, can be said to have obtained court order to detain them. But for how long can this last? And we have, I have personally expressed my position uh, to the government that you must handle these cases in line with the provisions of the law so that you do not give room, you do not allow loopholes to be exploited in the course of the investigation. Uh, I wouldn't want to go further because uh, I, I, I want to say Shion, that uh, I've also been contacted by some of the parties involved to see what can be done to ensure that these matters are properly prosecuted. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, investigation should be speedily conducted, mm -hmm. more so where allegations are made. I do not expect any delay in the investigation or the very serious allegations that have been made. All right, I mean, the case of Mr. Mefile, the State Security Service last year had alleged its involvement in terrorism, financing, and so on and so forth. Please quickly do something about that. With respect to money laundering and other offenses, take them to the appropriate agencies of the government. In the case of Mr. Bauer, we haven't been told the offense or the offenses he committed. Mm -hmm. So I, I cannot speak uh, very confidently with respect to the gentleman, except to ask the government or the agencies involved to speed up the investigation and have them arraigned in court if they are indicted. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you must grant them bail. Yeah. Mr. Falano, I'll take you to um, a corridor where you, you serve uh, as, um, uh, well, where you practice, which is a legal uh, corridor. And I'd like to remind you of this video, and I'd like to get your view on the impact on the Nigerian judiciary. And this is what uh, Senator Bukuchua said on the floor of the Senate. Uh, it's for her being worsened hmm. by Can you imagine Senator this? Senator Rocha Orochas said, although um, uh, the Lord, uh, uh, the, the former really... president of uh, the appeal court had come out to say all those were not right. But then it has implication. But let me remind you, for the sake of our viewers who are not privy to that statement made by Senator Bukuchua, the validity session of the Senate. Let me remind you, this was what he said. I must thank particularly my wife, whose freedom and independence I encourage. Nigeria is not working. While she was in Nigeria office. is not working. And she has been very tolerant and accepted my encroachment and extended her help to my colleagues. Uh, the wish. Please, I, I don't think it should be arrested. But direction. it it's won't not happen. A good idea. Can you see? It's not a good idea. Please. Can you see? That was one. And one would think that that was bad enough. I mean, this is. Senator Rocha Sokorocha. Okay, okay, and of course, you're watching this. Um, this was covered by channels, and we're having an extensive Amen. review of what's been discussed on there. Let's have a listen. We shall all stand to say Nigeria is a great country. And to those of you, our colleagues, including you, Mr. Senior President, you know you're a very smart politician. How you came back is yet another political book to discuss. I'm sorry? <laughs> I say how you came back 
is another chapter in our political history. How I came back from where? <laughs> Mr. President, President, how you return to the Senate as a senator will open another chapter of great discussion in our political book. Because I was shameful, the shameful the nation. President. Shameful nation. I never knew I'm really sad about this. How you were able to meander and return and leaving some of us. Next time, you must teach me how to do that. It, it was easy. It, it, it was easy. I was there with you in the field, but after our defeat, my constituents thought they needed me again. So the law is so overruled. Your thought and what does this mean for the Nigerian judiciary? Yes. What does it mean? <laughs> well, uh, the. Uh, do you have confidence in the judiciary as a citizen? Do you? Uh, least much to be decided. It's a very unfortunate. Do you have any confidence in the judiciary? Uh, apologies for interruption on the judicial area, but do you have much confidence in the in the in the judiciary? Based on what is going on, can you have any confidence? Can you see why we're saying we're going for Yoruba Nation? These are the things that are motivating us for. We That's why I'm wearing this, because Nigeria is not working, and the laws that are meant to be, uh, you know, put into place and to, and to acted upon and adhered to, have been ignored. So it justifies our call for self determination. It justifies it. Everything that I've been showing you now. It justifies it. And we have a right to go for self-determination. We're not talking about violence. We're talking about going via self-determination. Self-determination is an inalienable, alienable right. Nigeria, if were it to be working, different discussion altogether. It isn't. And to tell people to remain in a situation that is not working for them without, and, and when they are clearly clamoring in their numbers, to go for, uh, for self-determination via referendum, that is something that a democracy must indeed encourage because we're not talking about um, military means here. Let, let's proceed. Situation that a social forum, uh, distinguished senators will attempt to expose the judiciary to ridicule. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, and I've made this point before my colleagues in the legal profession, these statements should not be swept under the carpet. We have a duty to the National Judicial Council to cause an investigation into the very witty statement credited to Senator Adamu Bokachua. He must be called. So that his wife, uh, a former president of the Court of Appeal, the Honorable Justice Zena Bokachua, retired, has come out to say, to distance herself from the statement credited to her husband on the floor of the Senate uh, is, is formed part of the proceedings of the Senate. And for that reason, this country, to the National Judicial Council, who city duty to get to the root of the allegation. Mm. Uh, that, that's my position. All right. Mr. Not, yeah. I mean, the, the Senate president uh, uh, saw the danger of where the senator was going to, and he had to intervene very, very quickly. Okay. To avoid I recall. Further embarrassment if the senator continued to split the beans. And of course, you know, the statement credited to uh, Senator Korosha as well, which was an indictment of the Senate, Senate president. president. How did you come back? You were, you were involved in presidential primaries. How did you imagine senator through a primary, senatorial primary? So these are very serious allegations uh, that we should be yeah. just in the interest of the country. You see, um, why you see me wear...
people will ask, why am I, if I'm a Democrat, why am I wearing Yoruba Nation? Why, wh why am I wearing Yoruba Nation on my, on my top? You see, Yoruba Nation. Why? The reason why I'm doing that is because as a citizen of Nigeria, and I don't, I recognize I'm a citizen in Nigeria. Right now, it's not working for us. So we need to start looking at options, and we won't stop looking at the options until such kind of events when that the, the Senate president going for running for presidency and then running for a senator is allowed is, is, is clearly an illegal act that should not be allowed to stand. But it is an illegal act. That means Nigeria is not working. So we will continue to climb up for Yoruba nation via peaceful means. I, I, I'm not interested in anything other than peaceful means. I'm not interested, as many, as, I'm, as many of us are. We are going to discuss this. We are going to insist that the people participate in their government through Section 14 2 Sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from whom the government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. Right? And then 14 2 the participation by the people in the government shall be in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. We, those are the means in which we are going to use to encourage our people to wake up and become active participants in their governance. And when they get to the stage where they know and they're used to that, being active and participating, they can, should the system still be failing, they can now confident, confidently instruct those elected officials to take, to table a motion for the referendum to be inserted in the constitution of Nigeria, and they will instruct the elected officials to do their bidding, and they are going to monitor them. That is what we hope to do in the coming um, the years. Um, you know, um, in the, in the, over the over the next four years, to begin to encourage our people to become active participants in their governance to such an extent that they will now, on seeing that, once they see if the, if Nigeria doesn't begin to adhere to rule of law, then they are totally justified in going for self-determination via a referendum that's going to be inserted in that constitution. That is my stance. Yes, of course, I know I'm a Nigerian right now because I don't have any, there is no uh, Yoruba Nation passport as we speak. But the reason why we are clamoring for Yoruba Nation is because Nigeria is not working on the fuel scarcity on um, um, fuel uh, price, on the, the, the refineries, on the uh, statutory uh, uh, palliative, palliative that they meant to provide for the people, on so many levels, the economy, and you know, the, the reliance on the dollar that is actually impoverishing our people, the reluctance to look at proper options, so on and so forth. The fact that the rule of law is not being applied, there are so many grounds on which we are justified in going for Yoruba Nation. And we're going to do it via democratic means. And we will achieve it for as long as Nigeria refuses, the, 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 the government refuses, the, those successive government refuses to actually adhere to their own constitutional laws, we are justified in going for self-determination because we want the lives of the people to improve. Over 130 million people are in poverty. Over 130 million are in poverty. 33 million, to be precise, from what... Quote from Fem, uh, directly from Fem, uh, San Fem Falado. And of course, out of 20, 36, out of 36 terminals, um, oil terminals, yes, let me see, out of 36 uh, 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 terminals, only 20 of them are metered. Six, we leaving 16 terminals with oil being siphoned out by those who are said meant to be. Uh, governing and, and providing for the people. This is not workable. That's why we're justified in going for Yoruba Nation. I'm not talking about violent means. I'm talking about the injustice of the current system. That's what we're talking about. So let's uh, proceed, and I think we'll wrap up here on... Uh, San, um, Mr. Femi Falano, it's always a yeah. pleasure uh, speaking with you. Um, uh, no time stipulated can ever be enough to get your view. Leonard Sick, thank you so much indeed. <laughs> For your time tonight, Safem Falana, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, human rights activist. Indeed, a pleasure. So, thank you very much, and thank you to channels for airing that and giving us the the opportunity to be able to dissect um, um, and, and hear the views of um, the Lanet Silk, um, uh, San Femi Falano. Um, the key thing you need to take away from it is the reluctance of the federal government to actually is the pains of the people, i.e., doing the central thing to fix the refineries, to, secondly, ensure that the, the 16 remaining 
on meter terminals are immediately metered to prevent oil being being siphoned away by cooks who are within the government. And the issue of palliatives being tagged alone and and people consultants being paid over 200 million dollars whilst people are suffering i mean this are so many things president tinubu there's a lot on your plate you do need to begin to address these things and we sh- we trust that you will uh, but we need to you have to carry the people along but above all above all the office of the citizens we are the people to whom sovereignty belongs belongs we are the people to whom sovereignty belongs and it is our ultimate ultimately our office is the one that reigns supreme and we need to at this point until we get your nation we are going to we are encouraging you to please don't just be a bystander anymore you need to exercise the powers that you see on the screen we are going to talk you through that process of how you can do it community by community one of the first things you need to be very aware of is the monthly allocation for your local government area. That is a starting point. And you need to hold your local government area to those funds because those funds are what are going to create, give you the infrastructure you need. So your active participation in your government collectively, being a sovereign, is not open to debate. You must actively participate in your governance collectively. We on this platform, Citizen AY, the platform where we speak to the power, are here to encourage you. We are not here to give you fish every time you want, you're hungry. We are here to give you the equipment to be able to fish yourself. The equipment being using the powers in this constitution to begin to encourage you to stand up collectively in your community and hold those you elect into office to account. You need to monitor them. Without your active monitoring of our governance, nothing will work. You have a very central role to play in all seven and seven local government areas. So we're here to reiterate that. So I hope this makes sense to you. Um, the song in the background is a song I wrote. It's called How Long Are We So Far? It talks about how long are we suffering. I continue to maintain for as long as Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is not working, I am justified in going for Yoruba Nation because Nigeria clearly isn't working. There's over 133 million people in poverty. So, please join me. Take the time. I urge you, subscribe to Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. I am going to be doing something whereby on a monthly basis, I am going to be, I'll be going through every local government area. Certainly, I'm going to start with the Southwest. I'm going to go through every single local government area. I'll be covering it. I'll be doing like a one, two, three, four, something like that. You'll be seeing it. And you can, at your own pleasure, go through it for if you want to find out for your local government area. Then I will expand it to, to Biafra and other places. And others can do the same thing. Because I believe that in doing that and showing the steps, I've already shown you how you can go and look at the National Bureau of Statistics on a month-by-month basis to find out how much money your local government area gets and how you can then use that power to, those, those information to question those in government because you have this power, 14 to 8. Sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria, from whom the government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. authority. And section 42C, the participation by the people in the government shall be in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. And it's even translated into Yoruba for those in Yoruba. So when I'm doing that, when I'm doing the monthly allocation in the Southwest, I am going to be putting up the Yoruba version of this to remind those who are watching that that is the action they must take. They must not only get access to the monthly allocation, and know the amount, they must now take action based on the amount that they see that the local government is, uh, is getting. They can now go and question the local government chairman, the state of assembly, uh, House of Assembly members, House of Reps, the senators, the governors, demand that those funds be released because we are the people to whom ultimately the sovereignty belongs collectively and the, there is no higher office in the go- land than that of the citizen because we are the sovereigns. And we need to inculcate this too from our child, children in primary school, in secondary school, in university, and adult education, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And in our workplace, we need to begin to do that because that is the only way we will get the infrastructure we need. And we will continue to do that. And once people, if this 
Well, if we still do that and Nigeria is, uh, the, the, those in power are still insistent on, on oppressing the people, then the people are justified in going for self-determination. Can you see that there's a process here now? We're not talking about war. We're talking about going through a process to achieve Yoruba nation. And believe me, I'm wearing this because Nigeria is not working. For as long as Nigeria is not working, I'm justified in wearing this. I'm justified. Because I am doing this on a democratic, via democratic, democratic means. And we have the right to self-determination guaranteed by the United, United Nations law. United Nations Charter. Okay? So, uh, thank you so much for watching. You have been watching Season Network, the platform where we speak truth to power. If this resonates with you, please do share, share, and share. What I'd like you to do is go ahead, subscribe to Season Network, hit the notification button, and of course, give us a thumbs up. Thank you so very much. Please do share the podcast as and when you get it. You have been watching to Disney Why, the platform where we speak truth to power. Uh, please do share this podcast as and when you get it. Uh, leave comments. Let's hear from you. We need to take collective action. Your active participation in your governance is the only way you will get infrastructure within your community. And the only way you will get the government. We need to force the government to fix the refineries. No ifs, no buts. But it has to be through our collective active participation as sovereigns. Thank you so much for watching. You have been watching Citizen NY, the platform where we speak truth to power. Please do share, share, and share. I urge you. Thank you and bye for now.